uh, it is mixed. Uh, we know from a number of studies that the prison is not the best environment for criminals, but for security reasons and for uh, punishment reasons, people have to be sentenced into prison. And it was realized that it does not make much sense to put them in prison and let them out after the end of the sentence, after five years, three years, two years, whatever. But to treat them, to give them programs to try to rehabilitate. And this has strongly increased, as you say, and we have indeed relatively positive results. But of course, not big bang results, not all are rehabilitated. Many uh, recidivate, so they do again some crimes. And so, but overall, in most areas, violent offenders, uh, property offenders, general offenders, there is progress. Even with the sex offenders, a particularly difficult group, there are some encouraging results. This is causing new difficulties. Uh, for instance, with regard to terrorists or radical or extremist people who have done some crime, not always uh, killed dozens of people, but uh, have some terrorist activities, some of them cooperate. So we can do something with terrorists, but not all. It is very difficult. This is why currently, uh, I'm currently also involved in a European project on extremism and radicalization. We try also to prevent that they do not go so far that they may finally not carry out these serious offenses and have to go to prison. Also domestic violence, uh, men who are beating, some are even killing their women, uh, is, we have some programs that make promising effects for these offenders. There are other areas, uh, cybercrime, uh, organized crime, we always have to adapt uh, when we now talk about new forms of crimes, this was always the case uh, because old pathways are ending and then new crimes come up. But overall, I think we differentiate now. We have programs for the specific groups, for instance, specific sex offender treatment programs, specific violent offender treatment programs, and so on. Uh, it is a double policy. The policies in many countries are on the one hand getting tougher on crime, so sending more people and sending them longer into prison. Uh, Spain is a country where it has a particularly high rate of incarceration, for instance roughly 150 per 100,000 inhabitants are incarcerated. America has 700 per 100,000 United States, Germany has 80 or so, much lower. So the leaders in Western Europe are Spain and, United, and England. Uh, and we cannot uh, uh, arbitrarily reduce prison population because when the sentences are like that, they have to be put into prison. But the development of the programs led overall to a reduction of recidivism and a number of professions, psychologists, social workers, also the prison officers, contribute importantly to this development. I'm not knowing the future, as nobody knows, <laughs> but a penitentiary will always be there because we have difficult, risky and violent people outside and they are doing specific crimes. So we will have that. But, of course, if we could reduce <laughs> incarceration, then it would be more easy for some to adapt again if they get treatment also in the community, not on, only in prison. For instance, let me give an example. When we treat a sexual offender in prison, we may have some success, but he cannot really test his improvement because there are no children in prison. If he is a child abuser, there are no critical situations. And this is why we, today we say, okay, prison sentences, increasing treatment and rehabilitation in prisons, but also follow up and offer afterwards some programs, some help, some support. And this is happening to my knowledge in all Western countries. Psychologists, have 40 years ago or so 
Only very few worked in the prison or in other criminal justice uh, context. As you said, the number of psychologists has substantially increased working there and also the training has uh, improved. In former times, sometimes they only got a clinical psychology training or organizational uh, psychology training. Now we have specialists in forensic psychology, in criminal psychology, and they are doing very important work. This does not mean that all things can be done by psychologists. Psychologists cost more than the ordinary prison warden, but psychologists can help to improve also the behavior of prison wardens and closely collaborate with social workers and other professions, also of course with lawyers. Um, and in so far, psychology goes in the right direction because if we, for instance, can really rehabilitate an offender. This is also a contribution to prevention, for instance, for future crime, and also with regard to the family. Many prisoners have children, so if he does no longer become a criminal, then it's good for the family and the children. We have done research on that, and this is highly important. I personally think we are on a good track. So there will not be a revolution, totally new programs. We had already a number of programs, cognitive behavior therapy and other programs, that seem to be or are relatively successful. But it was often like uh, one size fits all. And we need now to differentiate more what program is specifically need by this type of offender or that type of offender. So I would say fine-tuning of programs is now necessary. We have also made progress in biosocial psychological research. So we know more about the brain than we know knew 20 years ago. And some influence is already there and we can improve the programs in collaboration with the neurosciences and neuropsychology. Uh, psychologists, of course, play a central role. Uh, they are more expensive as an ordinary warden. In so far we will uh, not have so much. But psychologists play a key role. Social workers, social workers who get a good forensic training. You cannot do simply what you do with other clients, for instance, poor people or so on. You need really to understand the origins, the causes of crime and the specific causes of the people. So if the university trains this criminal psychology or forensic psychologists, this is very important to have an offer on the market. And I assume that the government, or I don't know, has Spain private prisons, uh, they will require these people. Uh, but it is, of course, also a real challenge for the training, because it could not be only theoretical teaching uh, in seminars, it needs some combination with practice, exercising uh, uh, these things. So the students who are leaving the university get the know-how and get the knowledge to really uh, meet the demands of the penitentiary system.